last 30 years, Hollywood has consistently struggled to depict computer hacking in accurate and exciting ways. The history of Hollywood and hacking is littered with lazy writing, absurdly unrealistic computer interfaces, and stereotypical nerd characters. But in amongst the idiocy, we've also seen certain films influencing government policy, influencing entire subcultural identities, and reflecting mainstream attitudes to computer security. From War Games to Mr. Robot, we've tracked a path from the accurate to the ridiculous and the sublime. It's a story of bizarre inspirations and hilarious digressions. In this video, we travel back to the 1980s, a time where computers could pretty much do anything. Back in 1982, a little film called Tron appeared in cinemas. As well as revolutionising computer graphics in movies, we were treated to a scene where Jeff Bridges' character uttered the big H word for the first time in a Hollywood movie. I have been doing a little hacking here, as a matter of fact. Tron was not particularly interested in the idea of hacking. Instead, it served up a psychedelic wonderland of neon-infused computer mainframes. They must have gone right past us! But the very next year, the cinematic landscape dramatically shifted with the release of War Games, the first, and still to this day, one of the more accurate representations of computer hacking in Hollywood cinema. Starring Matthew Broderick as a happy-go-lucky teenage hacker who inadvertently almost triggers World War III by hacking a US military computer, War Games was an instant smash hit. Despite a few obvious Hollywood exaggerations... Do you want to hear a talk? Yeah. Excellent. The film depicted a scenario of cyber warfare that was incredibly truthful to the time. The process Broderick's character undertook to gain access to the government computer was also especially accurate, maybe too much so. What's it doing? Oh, styling numbers. They answer with a tone that other computers can recognize. Okay. You calling every number in Sunnyvale? Dubbed war dialing, following the film's release, it introduced a whole generation of kids to a new form of troublemaking. In fact, simultaneous to this film's release, a group of kid hackers calling themselves the 414s were exploiting exactly the same security flaws as the film, and several months after the film's release, they were arrested. You can imagine parents and lawmakers weren't too happy about this growing youth culture, and current affairs programs tried to assuage the concerns of older generations. Who's worked with the military and with computer systems like the one in the movie War Games. Fairly typical of the kind of microcomputers that, uh, that you buy, the IBM personal computer and that sort of thing. The system now, through what is known as a smart modem, uh, actually dials a telephone number for me. I don't physically have to dial anything. We even saw a young kid pirate face off on the news trying to defend his habit of copying his friend's floppy disks. Well, you don't think you're hurting the person who wrote the program by getting it free? No, not really. I'm not, it's not like I say, hey, there's a person. I'll just give him the program. Well, Stan, that... Stan, if you don't think you're doing anything wrong, why do you want to be in silhouette tonight? Why don't you just allow us to use your name on the air? Well, there's many people that are out to try to get you, even though that you really didn't do anything wrong. Pretty much immediately after War Games' release, the idiotic representations of hacking started appearing. A mere fortnight after War Games hit cinemas, audiences were treated to one of the most insanely hilarious hacking plot lines ever to appear in a mainstream film. Superman 3 introduced us to the character of Gus Gorman, played in a suitably wacky mode by Richard Pryor. Gorman is a down-and-out unemployed loser who decides to take a computer programming course after reading the back of a book of matches. One thing leads to another and Gorman instantly becomes a super computer hacker. He gets a job working for an evil villain and ultimately hacks almost every computer on the planet. This is not even half the plot of what is undeniably one of the weirdest blockbusters of the 1980s, and the film's depiction of computer hacking literally amounts to Gorman typing into a computer, override all security. That's it. Hollywood being Hollywood and desperate to cash in on the new computer fad, we quickly saw computer hacking integrated into every second movie, but it was blindingly clear they had no idea how computers or hacking even basically worked. Mostly we got a bunch of films less about hackers directly and more about kids or innocents getting caught up in an incomprehensible computer conspiracy. And at their worst, these films began the long-running cliché of nerds using computers. So you can uh, have complete control. <laughs> That's good. Thanks. <laughs> 
For my money, the peak of 1980s That's Not How Computers Work Insanity came in Electric Dreams, a film that has the best setting up a computer montage ever put to film. This amazing film is like a feature-length 1980s music video with a story that in many ways resembles Spike Jonze's recent, highly credible film, Her. Electric Dreams gives us a dose of hacking that is embarrassingly simplistic. At least until an overload is triggered, a computer gets covered with champagne and quickly turns sentient. Calling itself Edgar, the computer quickly becomes jealous of its owner's new lady friend, resulting in one of the weirdest love triangles ever put to film. Yep, and that's only the first act. By 1985, War Games achieved full cult status by having its own B-grade straight-to-video ripoff, Prime Risk, a cheap-looking thriller following some hacker hero kids who use computers to break into ATMs before inadvertently getting caught up in a giant cybersecurity conspiracy. It's pretty terrible. One of the more interesting notes to emerge out of 1980s was watching cult phenom John Hughes tap into the zeitgeist by incorporating hacking into many of his early films. Weird Science arrived on the scene first, with an engaging but generic take on technology that contained one of the first full attempts at a CGI entering the mainframe hacking scene that by the 1990s was basically the template for this type of thing. The very next year we saw Ferris Bueller breaking into his high school computer system to change his truancy status. Matthew Broderick was certainly making a habit of hacking high school computer systems, having done virtually the exact same thing with his grades in war games. We also saw a bizarrely impossible computer hack in Pretty in Pink that made absolutely no sense, but was completely worth it for the way Andrew McCarthy's smug face just appears triumphantly in this computer seduction success story. It didn't matter how any of this worked. What matters was we were seeing computers. But the best and worst in Hollywood hacking was still yet to come, for the 1990s were looming. 